Committee on Economic Affairs hearing on the pending eco zones. Uh, we call this jointly with the committees on local government, ways and means, and finance. And uh, as mentioned, we have quite a lot of uh, pending bills, both from the House as well as the Senate. And um, we uh, start with uh, several of them, and uh, these are the Cebu, Marinduque, Metro Iloilo, Occidental Mindoro, as well as Oriental Mindoro, Ilocosur, Bislig, Cebu Fourth District, both in the House and in the Senate, Bacolod, Northern Bohol, as well as Paluan. So um, with that, we recognize also our distinguished minority leader, Frank Trilon, no doubt here for the Iloilo Echo Zones, as well as uh, many of our friends from the House. So uh, please, from um, our committee secretary, uh, the only ones I see on screen for, for now that I recognize are uh, uh, Congressman and Deputy Speakers Johnny Pimentel, Nene Sato, and Butch Pichai. Is that correct? Yes, Comsec, please. Uh, Congressman Salimbayan, uh, Salimbangon, Janice Z. Salimbangon, Senator. Yes, okay. Is uh, she around? Is Congresswoman Salimbangon? Wala po ako nakikita sa aking... Oh, there we go. Okay. Hi, Senator. Yes, good morning. Okay, good thanks, morning. Janice. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, let's um, also acknowledge all the guests and resource persons that we have here. Comsec, please. To our distinguished guests uh, for today's public hearing, uh, from the Department of Finance, we have ASEC Valerie Joy Brion from the Domestic Finance Group. We also have Director Arvin Lawrence Quinones from the Policy Research and Liaison Group. From the NEDA, we have Yusek Mercedita Ensumbilia and Ms. Georgia Valdelion, Senior Economic Development Specialist. PESA is represented by Attorney Christine Heidi A. Rosales, as well as BOC is also represented by Attorney Karen Ann Yambao. From the Department of Budget and Management, uh, Ms. Kathleen Pilapil of the Local Government and Regional Coordination Bureau uh, is uh, represented by Ms. Kathleen Pilapil and Mr. Julius Camara, RO1. Mr. Stanley Superticioso, RO6, and Mr. Mark James Evangelista from the DLO. From the BSP, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, uh, we have Managing Director Maria Belinda F. Caraan, the Financial Supervision sub Subsector 2. We also have Director City Anisha M. Butokan, the Director of the Economic Research, and Deputy Director Maria Angelica Pivillena, the Department of Economic Statistics. They are also supported by their technical Acting Deputy Director Grace M. Medina, uh, Ms. Abigail F. Ilagan, and Attorney Richard Arman Angeles. With them also is Acting Deputy Director Grace Medina. From the Department of Transportation, we have Mr. Howard Pakis, Mr. Ms. Maria Marlene Nalyagan, Mr. Manuel Lardisabal. From the National Electrification Administration, we have Attorney Brian Merce. From the Department of Foreign Affairs, we have the, uh, Ray, Reynelda Mendoza, the Office of International Economic Relations. And we have Ms. Asiana Alexin Adia Amira Lagi, Ms. Jam Jamil San Jose. From the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, ang nakalag-in lang po ay si Engineer Cora Marigi Pugal Vicente, and Vicente Tadao and Mr. Raul Lorilla. 
uh, we, we now come to the representatives of the eco zones. Uh, from the, go the governor of the 4th district of Cebu, we have Honorable Joven J. Mondigo, their municipal mayor. We also, Mondigo Jr., we also have their congressman, Janice Z. Salimbangon. Uh, the, the Cebu Medellin LDU is also logged in, but we do not know their representatives. <coughs> from the governor of Marinduque, uh, from the office of the governor of Marinduque, they are represented by Attorney Romel Fernandez and Miss Marianne Cunanan. Uh, the representative of Iloilo, Honorable Julian Jambaronda, uh, she told us that she will be late, major late po, kasi because of the prior commitments. From the governor of the province of Occidental Mindoro, we have attorney Tirso Augustus L. Abeleda II and their representative, uh, the ever active Honorable Josephine Nene Ramirez Sato. Okay. From Paluan Special Economic Zone, Mindoro Occidental also, uh, they are represented by Miss Marie Joy Domingo, their mayor. Uh, from the governor, the Office of Governor of the Oriental Mindoro, we have Mr. Romeo Paner. And from the municipal government of Mansalay, that is also Oriental Mindoro, uh, they are represented by Engineer Alray Mansing, their Municipal Planning and Development Coordinator. From Bislig Component City, they are also represented by Engineer Aprodesio Alba, their Planning Officer, and also they are we are honored by Congressman Janity Pimentel. Their, their representative. Uh, from Iloco Sur Special Economic Zone, they are represented by their provincial administrator, Ms. Cara Michelle Tabios. And from uh, the Paluan Special Economic Zone, Magsaysay Province, Mindoro Occidental, they are represented by their municipal mayor, Cesar M. Tria. I, uh, likewise, from the Paluan Economic Zone, uh, from the San Jose Province, Occidental Mindoro, they are represented by their mayor, Romulo M. Festin. That's all, Senator. Thank you very much, uh, Committee Secretary. And um, I'd just like to open with uh, a few statements um, of conflicting policy. Um, I think the minority leader is fully aware of uh, this issue that um, the administration through the DOF and the NEDA have uh, persistently objected to the creation of any new echo zone since 2016. And uh, despite the fact that the president has on more than one occasion insisted on the decentralization of growth and development throughout the country through the Balik Provincia effort and the reality of the Mandanas ruling. So it has been the clamor of many provinces who see the compelling and rich potential in their areas to infuse and boost their respective economies. And it is also my um, belief and conviction that these eco zones can truly provide jobs and the means of livelihood for many residents in these difficult times of COVID, of death and other natural disasters, and the uh, deep and broad scarring all of these have caused in the economy. We have already complied with the DOF and NEDA requirements to align the incentives in these different bills with the new law of CREATE. And uh, we have also seen, sadly, the flight of many big investors to our neighboring countries as we continue to be the laggard in so many of these FDIs. We need a far more aggressive approach to entice investors, and you can count on my support for uh, these um, initiatives from the individual local 
government units, as well as the representatives in the House of uh, Representatives. I am uh, hoping that in the future, in the next administrations, foregone revenue will not be the single reason for uh, denying rural development, but uh, that we find a more fair and equitable distribution of economic opportunity in the various areas in our archipelago. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to call on Cebu and uh, Congresswoman Salimbangon, Janice, please, um, to uh, tell us a little bit about the Cebu 4th District Special Economic Zone. We are already aware that uh, Cebu has uh, so many, um, so many economic zones, uh, IT, cent IT parks, and yet they're all located in the Cebu City, Lapu-Lapu, and Mandawe area. Yes, uh, so Congresswoman Salimbangon, this is an effort to uh, put together nine LGUs in the northern tip of the island. So let's hear you. Senator Aimee Marcos, uh, can not hear? Okay, can not hear? okay na. So good morning, Madam Chairman, Senator Aimee Marcos, uh, Senator Franklin Drillon, fellow members of Congress, and other guests who are with us this morning. I have filed Bill number 10233, an act establishing the special economic zone in the 4th District of Cebu. This has already been approved in the House of Representatives. I am very much elated that Senator Amy Marcos filed a counterpart bill in the Senate, Senate Bill number 2193. The creation of Cebu 4th District Economic Zone is in tune with the government's agenda to promote rural development, ensure inclusive growth in the countryside, and create robust economic activity and wealth generation throughout the country. On the entire Cebu province, the 4th District of Cebu is best suited for the establishment of the special economic zone. The 4th District has all the economic factors and qualifications required of a viable economic zone. It has the widest stretch of flat land. It has seaport in almost all of its component municipalities and city, and the creation of a new airport in the municipality of Medellin is already in the pipeline. At this point, Madam Chairman, I would like to inform the good chairman that joining us today is the mayor of municipality of Medellin, Vice Mayor Benjamin Mondigo, where the, pro where the proposed economic zone will be located. Together with, him, together with him is Vice Mayor Alim, all the municipal councillors and the barangay captains of the 19 barangays of Medellin. The creation of the economic zone has all the support of the stakeholders in the 4th District of Cebu. Hence, its approval is highly recommended. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, Senator Amy Marcos. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I, um, I understand that this has uh, full local support, but uh, I am in receipt of an objection on the part of the NEA. Uh, indicating that uh, the uh, Cebu number two electrical co-op may uh, be um, deprived of its power under uh, PD 269 as amended to uh, operate the uh, electrical resources. What is uh, the position of NEA? Perhaps. Uh, you can uh, explain to us. You also make mention in your letter that I've just received um, that the co-op there is categorized as triple A and uh, that um, it therefore should be allowed to continue operating and supervising the electrical co-ops. Um, is there anyone from NEA who'd like to comment on the Cebu 4th District Initiative? Uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, good morning, uh, Madam Senator Annie Marcos. I am Attorney Brian. Yes, Attorney, I'm... please proceed. You're recognized. Uh, thank you. Um, good morning, uh, Senator Annie Marcos uh, and uh, Senator Tragindalon and to the other members of the committee. I'm Attorney Brian Mersa. I'm from NEA Legal Services Office. Our concern is only uh, pertains to the um, exclusive uh, jurisdiction of the uh, proposed um, uh, body corporate that will be having uh, will will be having overlapping jurisdiction over electric cooperatives. Um, PD two six nine uh, vested exclusive jurisdiction over uh, vested Tunea exclusive jurisdiction over electric cooperatives. Um, with this, uh, our concern really pertains to the technical um, capability of the proposed um, body corporate that will handle the um, electric cooperatives and other dis uh, distribution utilities. Um, they, there may be an overlapping um, policy implementation, uh, policy making, Your Honor. Yes, thank you very much, Attorney. And uh, would the Congresswoman or anyone from Cebu Fourth District like to make a rejoinder? Janice, yung audio, please. Madam, okay, ma Madam Chair. Yes, there we go. I think we can address that through a meeting. Yes, I think um, Neya has made the same uh, uh, objection uh, with regard to all the exclusive claims that are made in all of these bills or virtually all of these bills. So perhaps we can uh, uh, conduct a meeting in uh, the period of the PWG and so on to uh, put more appropriate language. Uh, in many cases, we're fully aware that economic zones put up their own power production uh but uh, in other cases they do not so perhaps this can be uh, addressed our minority leader has been raising his hand i'm sorry i uh, failed to uh, uh recognize the honorable minority leader senator franklin Trillon. madam chair um is the uh, the the uh, power distribution is proposed to be done by the zone authority and not by the goal and certainly that that uh, that prompts a uh, objection from the NEA in the representation of the electric cooperative but i guess i guess the question i want to raise uh, to the sponsor congresswoman Sally Bowen is why did you propose to create a separate distribution authority inside the zone and not rely on the cooperative uh, can we have a statement from the good uh, sponsor uh, on the assessment of uh, the services being performed by the uh, electric cooperative? I raise this issue, Madam Chair, as a general, as a question that is applicable everywhere, not only in uh, the uh, proposed economic zone in the fourth district, because today, we see, number one, we see a lot of complaints about the cooperatives as uh, because of the services uh, rendered by the cooperative. Uh, uh, and that clamor is, uh, is felt in my home province. Uh, number two, uh, the, uh, the uh, matter of, uh, of uh, the services of the cooperative is therefore an issue here. So may I know from the good sponsor, Congresswoman Sally Bowen, uh, is this a reflection of the efficiency of the cooperative? Uh, no. no, Senator, no. No, okay. No, uh, it is, uh, it's not. So why yeah. are you proposing to remove the cooperative from the authority to distribute uh, power in the zone? Uh, uh, Senator Drillon, this is to address the growing need of the economic zone, considering that we envision that several manufacturing firms will be established. 
Sorry, sorry, ma'am. I did not get the answer, Madam Chair. Can 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 the good uh, just so repeat the response, please? To address the growing need of the economic zone, considering that we that we envisioned that several manufacturers manufacturing. manufacturing firms will be established. The co -op. I guess the question is. Is that a reflection of the capacity of the cooperative to respond to the needs of the uh, future uh, lo lo uh, locators in the zone? Yes, the capacity, Senator. Yes, the capacity. Hindi po nila kaya? Ganun ba sa tingin nyo? Yes, yes. Baka. Baka, hindi nila kaya. Okay. But... Uh, so what is, uh, but are you willing to talk to them uh, in order to uh, uh, resolve this issue that you have with the cooperative, uh, Madam Sponsor? I think we have to expand the economic zone. Yeah. I'm just focusing. The, the electrical, the, ele the co-op. I think we have Sorry, to expand the co-op. I yield, yes, Madam Chair, you are... Yes, uh, if I may, uh, Congresswoman and Minority Leader, I'm in receipt of uh, the Cebu uh, number two, Cebeco two um, records, and they are really triple A categorized and has a 100% performance score in uh, the past few years. So it would seem that their performance is really um, unquestioned and the controversies that plague uh, Panay electric ops are not reflected in Cebu. But I think the hope of every uh, proponent of these echo zones is that they will be expanded in uh, the different uh, municipalities. Uh, because as we know, while the Sebeco is doing very, very well, uh, it could um, ratchet up its activities in the northern towns where it's still uh, rather uh, meager in terms of electrical supply. I think that's the effort. So how do we, uh, Madam Chair, if I may raise the question, how do we propose to respond to the objection of Nea in this particular case? The objection is very limited. The objection is uh, the exclusion of the uh, uh, electric cooperative in the power distribution inside the zone. Uh, how, how do we address this, Madam Chair? Um, I think that um, we have to revisit, uh, as we know, PD269 has vested all powers over electric co-ops um, unto uh, the NEA. And uh, this is not merely in the geographical area, but also in other services and infrastructures that the electric co-op may deem necessary or incidental to the accomplishment of their objectives. So it's a rather wide ranging power. So perhaps uh, this can be discussed because the same problem um, afflicts all the pending bills. Um, as we know, the um, electric co-ops are nonprofit. They, in many cases, bear a very heavy financial burden, very often in dollar denominated uh, loans as well. And that, in many cases, the um, expertise required and engineering required is simply not present. So perhaps uh, it's important that uh, we come to terms. Iba iba kasi ang condition, ano? So sibu magandang maganda yung uh, co-op in terms of performance. Pero alam natin sa ibang uh, sulok, ibang probinsya, marami talagang reklamo sa serbisyo at nagtatatag pa yung eco zone ng sariling power plant as a result. So iba iba yung situation. Uh, in this particular case, maybe it is just uh, the Cebu, uh, uh, the, the fourth district of Cebu economic zone, but in my mind, uh, this is a reflection of the uh, sentiment in many other parts of the country uh, where, of course, not in all cooperatives, but in, in we have, this is not new and we better confront the, the question, the issue that uh, there are a number of cooperatives whose performance uh, does not come up to the standard expected of a public utility. And that is why I am uh, trying to inquire from the good sponsor 
whether this uh, provision that would uh, exclude the cooperative from distributing uh, or even generating power inside the zone is a reflection of the, uh, of the uh, opinion of the good sponsor on the performance of the cooperative in that area. That's all I'm raising, uh, Madam Chair. And if it is, uh, how do we resolve this uh, objection uh, on the part of NEA? Yes, well taken, uh, Minority Leader, and I think both parties, both uh, the sponsor and the LGUs on one side and the NEA on the other side have agreed to meet and uh, discuss the possibilities to amend the present uh, track, the pres present language of the bill, uh, endowing um, the uh, new echo zone with exclusive authority. So, pag-usapan natin yan, kasi sa ibang lugar naman, eh, iba rin ang sitwasyon, as uh, the minority leader knows, where uh, there are so many complaints against the electric co-op indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. We'll just await the, uh, and we expect uh, the, uh, uh, the the good sponsor and the uh, to come up with the language uh, that will be submitted to the committee in so far as he is concerned, so that the objection of the NEA can be addressed and the needs of the echo zone can likewise be addressed. Thank you, Mr. Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Minority Leader, and uh, we will take that uh, into serious consideration with that. Um, if there are no more comments about the Cebu 4th District, perhaps we proceed to Marinduque Special Economic Zone. And uh, we have um, the uh, representatives of the proponents here. Comsec, is there a representative from Marinduque? Parang may narinig ako kanina. Attorney, uh, we have Attorney Romel Fernandez and Ms. Marian Kunanan. Good morning, Your Honors. Um, may I respectfully ask the Comsec, Your Honor, to kindly check whether the Honorable Governor is now online? Because uh, just a minute ago, he asked for the link, Your Honors. Uh, I, I guess it's best that he's the one to present our uh, case or position on, on the matter, Your Honor. But in his absence, I'm fully ready to take his place, Your Honor. Would you like to postpone it and we proceed to the Iloilo, uh, the Metro Iloilo Special Economic Zone to give uh, the governor some time to get on? Yes, please, if uh, that is possible. Thank you so much. Uh, Anjana Basi, Congresswoman Baroda. Comsec? Senator, uh, Senator wala pa po siya, pero she expressed last night na medyo malilate daw siya uh, due to prior engagement. Okay. Pero, wala pa po siya. I'm sure the minority leader is perfectly capable of speaking on behalf of uh, Iloilo. Shall we proceed? Or uh, is there anyone else? From yes. uh, Iloilo, please? Yes, minority leader, please. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Um... Being a native of Iloilo, I have basically no objection uh, to this measure. Uh, subject, of course, to uh, the uh, uh, to 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 the to the uh, statement that uh, yeah, everybody should be treated equally, whatever uh, <laughs> uh, is uh, is uh, granted as a as a uh, as a benefit to one or privilege to one. The zone should be granted also to all the others. I guess the question in general that I will ask uh, Madam Chair is, uh, these, many of these bills were filed before CREATE. That's correct. Now, we are aware that uh, the Department of Finance and uh, the NEDA were consistent in their objection to the creation of the special economic zones because they wanted control and uniformity and rationality in the grant of incentives. And uh, that is why in the CREATE bill, we uh, created the FIRB, uh, which is the, fin has the final say on the incentives grant, on, on the power or the incentives granted to the prospective locators. So the question I have, uh, Madam Chair, uh, is this, are these bills 
consistent with the, the provisions of the Create Bill. Uh, of course, we can always make an exception to these uh, uh, special economic zones uh, to the general provisions of Create, but the reality is, if we do that, both NEDA and the DOF will recommend a veto. So my first question is, uh, is this consistent with, are all these measures consistent with the Create Bill, and if not, uh, is there an intention on the part of the uh, committee and the committee chair to amend it so that it will not, uh, it will conform with the provisions of the CREATE bill? Madam yes, chair. thank you very much, uh, Minority Leader. And in fact, uh, we have been very conscious of updating all these bills, and we are certainly going to do that as well in the uh, committee report, so that they comply with the controversial and well-debated incentive system that CREATE has put in place, so that the industry and location tiers will be well-defined, and that longer incentives will be given to uh, the uh, desired sectors. However, indeed, as you have observed, there are issues, firstly, about the interpretation of control and administration of existing eco zones. Um, I suppose we are meant to await the IRR indicating what are these administrative, procedural, and ministerial concerns. For example, the budget hearings. We need to specify the agency for each um, of these echo zones. May mangulupa sa madaling sabi dun sa uh, control and administration by both FIRB and uh, the DOF. Kasi nga, we have BOI, we have 14 IPAs, in fact. There's the BOI, as we know, there's the PESA. San sila kakabit sa dinami dami nito. That's not really been clearly defined, and I'm a little bit confused personally as uh, to where we're going to derive the guidelines for such. So, isang question yun. Yung isa pa, in addition to create, um, as uh, the uh, minority leader knows full well, as well as the other legislators here present, the Omnibus Investment Code gives a, an investor visa uh, through the BOI. Uh, at $75,000 um, total of investment. However, as far as the investor's visa is concerned, there is a cutoff in CREATE and um, as well as the um, uh, Foreign uh, Investments Act, SOFIA, of 200000 so, ang tanong ko dyan, how are we going to align the 75,000 on one hand, the 200,000 on the other hand? This is to do naman with FIA and the Omnibus Investment Act. So, these are the things that we need to align with CREATE um, because they could be uh, rather uh, tricky in implementation. And more importantly, to work out the details for control and administration among the 14 plus IPAs. Yes, Minority Leader, please. Yung audio po? Yeah. Uh, the Department of Finance is represented in this hearing, Madam Chair. Yes, I believe they are. We can and, call upon and, them. Neda is also here. I believe so, yes. We have a USEC present. So may I address these questions to them? Uh, I assume you have gone over these bills being discussed now with this committee. May we know the position of the DOF and the NEDA insofar as these bills are concerned? I think the commitment, if I can if I can read the committee chair, the commitment is that we will align the provisions with CREATE. But, you know, having mentioned, having said that, uh, this the, the Senate had a very bad experience in when we, when we passed the CREATE. I was uh, taking the position that the creation, the incentives pro cannot be a part of the National Internal Revenue Code, but I was uh, overruled by the majority. So the result was that the president exercised his line item veto as this was assumed, as create was, uh, was uh, presumed to be a revenue measure. And with that, many of the policy uh, decisions of the Senate 
as reflected in the amend in the provisions of the bill, uh, uh, which I, we understand was with the concurrence of the Department of Finance, were nevertheless subject to a line item veto. And that is why uh, it is it is quite uh, dis disappointing uh, that this happened. That's why I had proposed that the uh, create bill should not be part of the National Internal Revenue Code so that there can be no line item veto, but I was overruled. So the result was that the president, I assume upon the recommendation of the DOF, exercised his line item veto power over the incentives granted. So the question that I raise now with that background, Madam Chair, is what is the position of the Department of Finance and the NEDA on this? Because we can, uh, we, we can the, the, the good chair can work hard on this uh, measure. Uh, we can subject this to a debate in the floor, on the floor. But <laughs> if the Department of Finance and the NEDA would recommend a veto, we're wasting our time. So may I know now, uh, I want a direct answer from NEDA and from the DOF. Assuming that we align the uh, incentives uh, uh, under create uh, with uh, uh, that these bills or these incentives granted would be aligned with that uh, in, in, uh, in the create law. And uh, the matter, of course, the matter of control and supervision would have to be governed by what by the law that we passed. So, uh, assuming that those those factors are uh, addressed correct uh, well, may I know the position of NEDA and uh, DOF on these proposed economic zones that are being created? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Minority Leader. I believe the DOF is represented by ASEC Brion and the NEDA USEC Sombilia. Are they online? Yes, Senator, they are. And as the Minority Leader knows, they've objected to the uh, creation of any echo zone since the year 2016. Yeah, they create, they, they, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, I suspect that before create, they objected to the economic zones. Uh, yeah, that's my correct. correction, and I can be corrected. But precisely, uh, the uh, create in the create bill, the authority uh, or the final authority on the grant of the on, uh, incentives and the power of the uh, IPAs to to grant the incentives is subject to review and final decision by the FIRB. So that assuming we follow the same policy here in these uh, various uh, special economic zones can we get the assurance of the uh, dof and the DEDA that they will not recommend a veto because let me let me let me spread it to the record the uh, disappointment of a number of our colleagues that a number of provisions in create which were introduced with the concurrence of the DOF, were actually subjected to a line item veto. Uh, and uh, uh, in other words, the impression of some senators is that <laughs> the Department of Finance uh, was not true to its word. Pagkatapos mo mapag-usapan at magpagkasunduan na ganito ang ating ang provision, e bigla pong na subject ng line item veto. So, ibig ko lang po balaman kung ano po ang posisyon ng Department of Finance at ng NEDA dito po sa mga economic zones. Yes, DOF, please. Nandiyan ba si Asik Brion? Good morning, Madam Chair and Your Honors. I am Attorney Valerie Brion from the Department of Finance, Domestic Finance. Okay, please respond to the Minority Leader. Your uh, audio is uh, fluctuating. Um, a little weak. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are you? Is the audio better? Um, the Department of Finance recognizes the intent of these economic deals to create jobs, attract investments, and spur economic growth in various parts of the country. 
With these same objectives, the Senate has approved key economic reforms that aim to enhance our socioeconomic fundamentals, such as the CREATE law and the three economic liberalization bills. CREATE um, is the largest economic stimulus program for businesses in our recent yes, history. Yes, with all due respect, Attorney Brion, we have a long agenda. I'm in receipt of the DOF statements. It's a simple question from the minority leader. mag approve na ba kayo ng ECOZON pagkatapos ng CREATE o hindi? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, we believe with the CREATE and the three economic liberalization reforms, we can create jobs, attract investments, and spur economic growth without creating new economic zones. Um, we have three top concerns over bills to create economic zones or free ports, and these are, first, the creation of more tax-free zones does not guarantee economic success. Uh, as you said, uh, leader, have, uh, in our agenda, uh, do I get it that the position of the DOF is that they are objecting to the special uh, economic zones because in their in their view uh, investments can be attracted uh, without creating economic zones the, that's a very simple and direct question can we say have yes or no uh, yes madam chair we believe with create and the three economic liberalization reforms we can achieve the very objectives right. from creating these new economic zones without creating the uh, you we can achieve the objective without creating special economic zones uh, without creating these new proposed economic zones madam chair. yes without uh, with the, therefore uh, uh, you your position is if even if the, if Congress will pass these laws, your department will recommend a veto because these bills are not needed. Uh, our consistent uh, view on these bills, Madam Chair, is that um, we currently do not support the creation of more economic zones. In so yeah, yeah, okay, can we have a, so the simple answer is yes, we will recommend a veto. Yes, we will object to these bills, Madam Chair. Sorry, sorry. Yes. We will object to the bills. I, I don't understand the answer, Madam Chair. Very simple question. They will uh, object. Uh, I think uh, minority leader is what she's saying. They will object. They will uh, suggest a veto. Regardless okay. of the fact that we have already passed the CREATE in accordance with their requirements. Do you confirm that statement of our chairperson, uh, uh, Under Secretary Brion? Your Honor, uh, yes, we will object to the bills. Eh, bakit pa tayo nag-create kung o-objectan pa rin pala dahil sa foregone revenue? Uh, Madam Chair, there are currently three issues that we are still seeing on the creation of economic zones and free ports. Yeah. Uh, first yeah. is that yeah, what are your issues? Okay, we are we do realize that we have uh, exerted a lot of effort in coming up with the create bill uh, to be to support the policies of the Department of Finance. Uh, even those provisions where the Department of Finance agreed to were vetoed. <laughs> uh, and and uh, but we cannot do anything about that let's not cry over spilled milk the issue now is there are these economic zones being proposed and uh, you are telling us on the record that the department of finance will recommend a veto of these bills uh, may we know under what circumstance would the department of finance endorse the approval of these special economic zones so that we can adjust the bill because that is the reality that we face if if we even how well we try to come up with a uh, with a viable and acceptable uh, law if that does that meet the policy issue uh, the or the policies of the department of finance uh, chances are it will be vetoed that's that's the reality and that's how our system works so I guess the question, the question that I want to raise is, under what circumstances would the Department of 
finance agree to the clamor of the uh, of, of the uh, LGUs and uh, the uh, especially uh, the the local officials that they be given an opportunity to 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 attract investments in their area uh, as part of the uh, of the devolved powers. Uh, that is why I think the basic question that I want to raise, Madam Chair, Kailan po ba, under what circumstances will you agree to have special economic zones in the provinces? Uh, Madam Chair, during the start of the 18th Congress, the economic team sent a letter to the leaders of both houses, where there was a recommendation that at the minimum for uh, the creation of eco zones or free ports, there should be a master plan and cost benefit analysis to identify which areas in the country would benefit from such shows and which activities in this zone should be supported. Yeah, I assume that concern master plans. Yeah, I assume that concern will be addressed precisely because we have given the FIRB in the create bill the power to 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 approve the uh, the uh, incentives granted by the uh, IPAs uh, uh, or the uh, yes uh, uh, the IPAs and in this particular case the eco zones to prospective investors. In the public, there no objection, you know, and we support. I supported that because talagang kung saan saan kung you know unless there is a policy, uh, firm policy uh, in, uh, in the law, uh, you know, it is natural that kung ano, kung iba ibang incentive ang ibibigay because natural po yan na magkukumpit eh. But in this particular case, we have already the create bill. There are already uh, uh, guidelines imposed. Uh, even if it is just a law and we can amend for a specific special economic zone, we will not do that because we know that if we do that, then a veto will certainly come. But having said that, kahit ba anong inalagay namin, ito pa veto ng Department of Finance? That's been the experience of this committee, Paul. Yeah, so why are we wasting our time? That is why you want to place this on record. Okay. Uh, kahit ano po ba ang aming ilalagay dito sa community report at sa, sa bill, eh, uh, ibibito, the, the Department of Finance will recommend a veto? Madam Chair, um, the Department of Finance will be willing to work with the community, Madam Chair. The Department of Finance is willing to work with the committee. Good. So can can we are part of the committee? Can you share with us what those uh, acceptable uh, policies uh, that you would like to see in these uh, uh, special economic zones? Madam Chair, um, as I've mentioned earlier, Madam Chair, the Department of Finance would have to take a look at the cost-benefit analysis from I'm the sorry, creation what? of these zones. The cost-benefit analysis, sir. The cost-benefit analysis. Why? Uh, Ano po FIRB yun? Ha? Di ba FIRB po yun? Kaya nga eh. Eh bakit pa balik-balik? Parang chinuchubibo naman ninyo yung mga local government, pa ikot-ikot, magdi-DOF, mag-FIRB. Babalik na naman DOF, babalik NEDA, FIRB. Parang uh, linuloko na natin to. Uh, but on that nasty note, may I recognize Senator Tolentino, Congresswoman Jam Jam Barota, Congressman Greg uh, Kas Gasataya. So uh, yes, ASEC Brion, please. Kawawa naman yung mga NGO natin, chinuchubibo na natin pa ikot-ikot ng FIRB at saka DOF, tapos pabalik-balik. Uh, maybe It, I can uh, reverse uh, the question and ask, ang DOF ba, may master plan ba kayo of uh, preferred priority areas that, have you ident that you've identified as uh, growth points or uh, targets for development? Baliktad na lang, what if the committee just gears ourselves towards your master plan? Kung meron. 
Kasi matagal ko na rin yan hinihingi sa neta para doon na lang kami tututo at hindi na mag-aksaya ng panahon. Madam Chair, uh, through CREATE, Madam Chair, there is a provision that provides the longest tax incentive packages for less developed areas. And in fact, it is the position that uh, without creating these new eco zones, CREATE will still provide the benefits that uh, these new eco zones seek to, um, seek to deliver, such as creating jobs, attracting investments, and spurring economic growth. So, so if you're saying that create uh, already uh, can provide the answers, what is your basic objection to these bills, which will symbolize the devolution and the, uh, uh, and the uh, symbolize the uh, authority of the local government units to uh, to to craft their own policies consistent. With the national policy as enunciated in CREATE and uh, with the Department of Finance. Please help me understand because we want to work on these bills. We want to work with the executive branch. We want to work with the Department of Finance, but uh, we want to work on the basis of reasonable proposals. Notwithstanding the fact that uh, we have lean backward and accommodated and accepted the principles or the philosophies uh, of the Department of Finance as uh, found in the Great Bill, although I will repeat, and nga tayo sa Department of Finance ng several provisions, the veto pa rin, in any case. So that is why I am a little concerned. You know, the, second, the chairman will be burdened by uh, preparing committee reports on each of this measure. She will present this to the Senate. Uh, she will be subject to interpretation. And pagkatapos, ibibito lang, medyo na, it's not fair. That is why we want to know uh, from, from what we hear from the good uh, secretary, uh, they are not in favor of these bills. Fine, uh, but can you tell us your basic objections so that we can address address them, rather than saying it is a duplication, mm -hmm. or that uh, the powers granted are already being exercised by the national government, uh, because part of training our local executives is to enable them to craft uh, policies consistent with the national law and in this particular case to craft policies which can attract investors and given the incentives as provided in the national laws so what is the basic objection i cannot understand it i'm sorry for being makulit madam chair but this is a no, basic issue. <laughs> it's a basic issue that we have to tackle uh, in general before we go into each of the uh, of the measure uh, in the calendar. Yes, Asik, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, is, this is this policy of vetoing new echo zones absolutely ironclad with no exceptions whatsoever? Madam Chair, there are currently three concerns um, on the creation of these echo zones, and we have consistently issued uh, similar concerns across all proposals to create new eco zones or free port zones. So the first is that um, based on our studies, the creation of more tax-free zones do not guarantee economic success and comes at great cost to taxpayers. So in well, 2019 uh, alone, the uh, forgotten... Can you say that again? What is the first uh, policy issue and objection that you have? The creation of the special economic zones will not what? Will uh, not guarantee. Does not guarantee economic success. Will not guarantee. Okay. <laughs> in based on our studies with Madam Chair in 2019 alone. Are you saying uh, that the revenue that the passage of the create will guarantee guarantees economic <laughs> success? I mean, I do not accept that. 
that you are saying that the local executives have no capacity whatsoever to 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 uh, exert or to pro, pro, to promulgate programs that will create economic success. Anyway, let's go to the, the second one. The first objection is that uh, you're saying that the, the uh, eco zones uh, will not guarantee economic success. I don't accept that. But but what is the second? Thank you, Madam Chair. And on the first point, Madam Chair, in 2019, um, the investment, the IPAs, the foregone revenue from the IPAs amounted to 449.5 billion in the form of value. Very, very, very I'm sorry, but precisely because of those of those uh, inconsistent policies that we created the FIRB. Now the FIRB can tell the uh, investment promotion agency that is not consistent with uh, with, uh, with with our uh, economic policies and therefore that grant of incentive is uh, disapproved. So that issue was addressed. That issue was addressed. So may we know, okay, so the, 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 uh, the, the, that is certainly not a valid uh, objection. What is the second objection? The second objection, Madam Chair, is that the presence of eco zones does not necessarily alleviate poverty or improve jobs based on the data that we saw from the Philippine Statistics Authority. The poverty incidence in provinces with eco zones increased from 19.6% in 2015 to 22.8% in 2018. Ajan mag object na po ako. Magwawala na po ako dyan. Kasi uh, <laughs> uh, if the minority leader will allow, I'm really going to butt in. Uh, that is insane. I don't know where this data is derived from. But certainly, I have the experience of a bitter nine years bringing in the pilot project of my brother, the windmills. We brought in over 300, 500 million US dollars of foreign direct investment without any help from the DOF. In fact, until today, we have a tax case pending with them. Uh, the point being that a small remote province with no free port, no, no, uh, no uh, effort uh, from the national government managed to alleviate poverty. We're a first class province. We have single digit poverty numbers and there are many jobs. Nevertheless, the same can be said of provinces like Bataan, uh, where we see their poverty rate has plunged and job opportunities are rife and uh, already exploited by uh, many all over the place. Cebu, if you see the uh, Cebu zones, the jobs that have been generated have cascaded all the way to the far islands of Mindanao. I'm sorry, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, position of the DOF that uh, eco zones do not alleviate poverty and nor improve jobs is uh, utterly and completely absurd and false. And the second, the second <laughs> objection is the same as the first. The first Ayan objection na, is for gun revenue pa rin lang success. The second objection is that it will not alleviate poverty. Pareho po yan. Ayan. And ko alam kung pagkaiba niyan. What is the third objection? The third objection is on uh, I've already mentioned, Madam Chair, the creation of more eco zones without master plan and a cost benefit analysis. Yeah, it's not consistent. It's not consistent, Madam plan. Chair. Hindi naman haharap yung mga LCE natin na walang master plan, walang cost benefit. Alam naman nila yung ginagawa nila eh. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, um, the policies are the right sizing policy of the national government and fiscal prudence. The, the government will have to... It's non-existent pa. It's still non-existent. Why are we talking about its scale? Yes, Madam Chair, there's also a concern on creating new government offices. And based on the capitaliza capitalization requirements of the bill, Madam Chair, the government will have to allocate at least 10.8 billion for the capitalization requirements under these bills. This does not yet include recurring subsidies and ensuring pension benefits. 
due to the creation of new government positions. Mm. <laughs> well, we say cost-benefit ratio. You're saying that it has not been shown that uh, 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 that uh, the uh, that it can be justified if you look at the cost-benefit ratio. You are if, when you talk about cost-benefit ratio, you are talking about uh, budgetary allocation as uh, as, uh, as not being uh, favorable or not be uh, or, or uh, there is no uh, uh, internal economic rate of return which will justify the investment of public funds is that what you're telling us when you say cost benefit ratio madam secretary brion when you say cost benefit ratio you are referring to capital outlays or budgetary allocation that would have to be uh, included in the national budget for the special economic zones. Is that what you're, you're telling us? Uh, Madam Chair, for by cost-benefit ratio, we mean the government cost versus the economic benefits that uh, yeah, what is the government cost? The infrastructure, the MOE, the salary. Is that what you're saying? The government cost will be the foregone revenues, the opportunity cost, and the, the uh, tax expenditure, and the budget to implement the incentives. Okay. Foregone revenues. Doesn't the creation of the FIRB precisely address that concern? So that if in the view of the FIRB, the incentive granted will result in foregone revenues without the corresponding uh, economic activity being created, without the corresponding employment generation, uh, it is not worth, uh, it, is, it should not be approved. But isn't that precisely that standard the standard that the FIRB will impose upon the investment uh, uh, aid, uh, I mean, promotion agencies, including the zones to follow? Was it not the whole purpose of CREATE? Yes, Madam Chair. So, uh, the objective was CREATE. If that is the purpose of CREATE, why are you objecting? to to these uh, economic zones that are being proposed when precisely they're subjected to the create to the create law meaning that the FIRB has the final say so that if the FIRB says that we cannot approve the incentive because of the foregone revenues without the corresponding benefit we will not approve this so what else is the problem uh, in in uh, endorsing the passage of these uh, bills. Ah uh, yes, Madam Chair. But aside from the foregone revenue, there's also the cost of creating the bureaucracy. What? What? I'm sorry. The cost of creating the bureaucracy, sir, including allocation for the capitalization requirements. At yes, billion for this of course, we say, given the resources of the local governments today, that the capital outlay. Huh? Shall be 50% national government, 50% local government. Is that objectionable to you? I am sure these governors, these uh, uh, and representatives would be willing to contribute 50% of whatever capital outlay is necessary, if only to overcome the objection of the Department of Finance on uh, budgetary requirement. Ay, ano ba naman dyan ang kailangan? Kalsada, hindi naman siguro malaki yan. Bodega or whatever, uh, factories. Eh, I am sure that the LGUs to make their place attractive for investment would exert every effort to make the eco zones in their locality viable and attractive to the investors. So that is why I'm proposing, uh, if your objection is on the uh, capital outlay, uh, would, would that objection be overcome or addressed 
by a provision that uh, in so far as capital outlay is concerned, 50% will be borne by the local governments? Madam Chair, we will have to confer with our principals on this proposal. <laughs> Oh, dira talaga. Yes, minority leader, mas kuripot pa sa Ilocano itong mga DOF na to. Ano ba naman yung 10 billion capitalization kung tutuusin? Uh, billions of dollars come in in uh, foreign direct investment in other countries and we're still the laggard in the region. Perhaps at this juncture, um, so that we're not accused of harassing poor ASEC Briones, eh, punta naman natin si Yusek Sombilla. Baka may Baka may uh, ibang ideas naman yung USEC na maintindihan natin at katanggap-tanggap. Um, is uh, USEC Sombilia of, uh, of Paneda here? Yes. USEC, Good kawawa naman si Attorney Brion. Good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, and uh, good morning to uh, uh, Senator Drilon and all our uh, 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 all present here in this uh, committee meeting. Uh, you probably already know that, you know, the economic managers, the NEDA, the DOF, the DBM, and even the Banco Central share the same uh, 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 position with regards to what the most of what already have been said by ASEC, uh, by our good ASEC, Brion, no? Uh, so I think you know, just to, you know, just to, you know, just to get this into some sort of a, some sign of an agreement up to 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 uh, we'll probably just have to i i think you know the, the the master plan and the analysis of the cost and benefit of all these echo zones is very going to be very crucial madam chair and speaker Drilon, because that is how we'll be able to to see if all these echo zones will be really contributing to the incomes of the communities so I think those are going to be very, very necessary. And as you have already been saying, that you know, uh, the the FIRU, yes, opo, opo, opo. So we have to. You know, at the outset, NEDA and DOF, ini inflict rin niyo sa ating mga LGU. Paulit ulit naman, dakilang chubibo yeah. naman ginawa niyo sa amin. Yun sige po, uh, Madam Chair. We'll try to, you know, uh, sit down with with whoever technical working group with FIRB to see to it that we have all those documents in place, you know, to evaluate, to analyze, and and uh, and uh, uh, and and see how this uh, all these bills will will really, you know, uh, 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 we can consider them. Uh, ma, ma, importante po kasi yon kasi marami po na mga ego zones talaga na you know, they were not really providing, you know, that uh, the, the incomes to the secure, I mean, and, and that is already on the basis of of the studies na naga, na, 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 nagawa ng DOF. Na yes, but you said, you said, at the risk of debating with you, I'm very familiar with many echo zones in the past that have not generated any income or revenue yes. or jobs. But those are the past mistakes. And we are now going to impose that on the new potential uh, areas. Yes. Because we made mistakes in the past, Shut down na tayo. Ayaw na natin ng foreign direct investment. Wala nang eco zone. Para no, uh, no, parang nagugulo. Kaya na kamali kayo eh. Gagawa kayo ng mas maganda ngayon eh. Yes, yes, Madam Chair, and that is what we what we want really to ensure. Na all these eco zones will really, you know, provide, you know, what their objectives are. And that is why we, we we need all of these documents. We need to see all of these documents and to get through all the the, the necessary uh, review and but analysis. Sir, para ma ma ano natin yan. O nga, pero since July 2016, USEC, not a single application for a new echo zone has ever complied with all these requirements. Is that uh, correct? Lahat na nag-apply palpa. Sorry, uh, Madam Chair. Hindi sa NEDA, hindi daw sa NEDA ang 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 approval nung past na ego zones. I'm not sure. DOF, would you have a 
you know, and information on those from 2016. Yes, I recommend kayo sa bawat isa mo na pa rin 2016, even earlier. There, there are probably reasons, uh, Madam Chair, kung bakit. And I think we really need to get, you know, into those. And again, moving forward, uh, let's work together to, you know, get, you know, uh, this uh, eco zones, you know, uh, really Still ensure that they deliver. Said. Why is, why are Marinduque, Cebu Fort District, Metro Iloilo, Bacolod, etc., being punished for the sins of Sambuanga, Apeco, etc.? Ang layo naman. Di ba no, no, hindi naman, naman po. Na yeah, hindi naman po. I think we just need, you know, the, those proper evidences and proper documentations that a, indeed they will really deliver you know, the, 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 the objectives that they are really promising to the LGUs. Yun lang yun, uh, Madam Chair. And I think, kaya nga pa ulit-ulit po namin siguro na, na sinasabi ito kasi we haven't really, you know, we haven't really, I don't know if the, the, those, the documents that we want and want to see, to see that, you know, this Ego Zones will really deliver those, you know, already reach our, our, uh, our offices. So, uh, yun lang po. Uh, and I and we are willing to work with whoever the technical working group with the with the uh, uh, the whoever made this bill so that you know uh, we can have some of them probably those yeah. who are re those which are really care. you know. Thank you, Yusek, uh, minority leader. Suko na ba tayo? Hindi, hindi po ako susuko. All right. Can we ask <laughs> hindi po ako susuko. Hindi, hindi rin po kami susuko. <laughs> We have just have to work together to, you know, to get this. Uh, Madam uh, Yusek, what I want to place of record is that Congress is the policy making body. Of course, subject to the uh, to the separation of powers provision, which will allow uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the executive branch to veto the suggested policies of Congress. Now, having said that, however. The exercise of these powers uh, are supposed to be premised on reasonableness, not arbitrariness, especially uh, especially th that we have already laid the groundwork uh, mutually agreed on the create. And yet here is a bunch of laws designed to empower uh, and allow the LGUs to chart their own destiny subject to the uh, supervision of the uh, national agencies and yet ayaw niyo pong pumayag na na ipasa na maging batas itong mga bills na ito and that is why i will ask you uh under secretary sumbilia with the permission of the chair can you tell us can you suggest to us can you submit to us the provisions that you would like to see uh, in these bills, uh, incorporated in these bills, in order to merit the approval of the Department of Finance. Uh, I assume it yeah. cannot be stricter than the provisions of the CREATE bill and uh, CREATE law. And these uh, local government units are willing to, uh, to go along with that, uh, are not asking for exemptions. I am, I am sure if the good chairman will recommend that 50% of the capital outlay should be burned, should be, uh, should be provided by the LGUs, these LGUs will agree to do that. Uh, because it is for their own benefit that they provide an environment conducive to investment. They will, they, in fact, sila ang mamimilit dito, no? maganda kalsada, etc. But the, the power should be the energy power should be consistent and uh, sufficient. Or it is to their selfish interest that these eco zones succeed. Now you're talking about the cost benefit ratio. Yes, uh, yes, yes. The, the chair says, "Ang dami na cost benefit studies na sila pichay nyo. Wala namang nangyari." Oh, eh, siguro so kaya nga po tinatanong ko. Para naman for the benefit of these uh, congressmen who are pushing for this. What provisions would you like to see included in this Eco Zones proposal 
which will enable the executive branch to concur with the Senate and with Congress to have these echo zones. Madam Chair? Yes, you recognize yeah. the Yes, that, that is why I was already suggesting that, you know, we will be, we'll discuss this, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss this with DOF, we'll discuss this with DBM, we'll discuss this with, in, with the technical working group, with all your additional, uh, you know, uh, recommendations, we'll try to, you know, sit down again and review all of this and see, you know, which of this bill could really go, but I think, we still need to, to, to get some of those documents because, uh, you know, all of us would really want that, what you know, those echo zones will really Madam, you Madam, know, provide Madam those Secretary, benefits. Madam Secretary, we are talking here about policy. You know, we're talking yes. about policy. We're not talking about whether or not a particular uh, echo zone uh, would satisfy the cost-benefit ratio. We're just talking about policy of allowing uh, giving authority for these eco zones, subject to the uh, provisions of credit, subject to whatever the executive branch would like to see included in the law, uh, rather than having this vetoed. Yeah, yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, when can you when can you submit when can you submit this proposed measure? Uh, we will, so I will. We will be discuss. I will discuss this with DOF. And uh, DBM, uh, uh, yes. honorable yes. speaker, Madam yes. Chair, and you know, uh, yes, we'll you, let you know as soon as possible when we could Susan, probably provide in the past. As uh, in my past life as a local government official, we have actually offered a hundred percent bearing of the capitalization cost. We've also offered to guarantee X number of jobs. We've also offered to guarantee X number of 100 million US dollars. We've also um, pro we've also volunteered a self-destruct provision that if it doesn't work in three years, we're going to uh, obliterate ourselves. We've also offered zero incentives for X number of years. Kung ano ano na sinabi namin, kahit kailan di kami pinagbigyan. We'll take all those again into consideration, Madam Chair. And you know, as I said, I you know will will sit down with DOF and uh, the so, other equity managers, and probably with the technical working group of this. Bill, so that you know we can come up with the, you know whatever provisions that will help, you know get these bills passed. Madam Chair, yes, Madam Chair, right the right reason right. why I want a specific timetable when yes. this will be submitted is because the sentiment in the Senate is that the bills, the laws that we pass, gets not implemented because of the refusal of the executive branch to issue rules and regulations, and that is why. We would like, from from where I sit, Madam Chair, yes, we recognize the uh, the uh, need for this uh, uh, for, for the guidelines from the Department of Finance. Can we have these guidelines uh, that later than Friday, so that the committee can prepare a report and uh, submit? Remember that we have barely uh, X three weeks time, or three weeks to go. So if we can submit to us the proposed uh, uh, the proposed amendments uh, uh, which will be incorporated in the committee report because uh, then then that will hasten things because all of these uh, provisions all of these eco zones uh, bills have uniform provisions so in the Pumahira, Pangalawa, we are already agreed in the committee that we should not create and exceptions, uh, exceptions from create. We have agreed that 50% of the capital outlay, without consulting the LGUs, they are willing to uh, to shoulder in so far as the capital outlay is concerned. But we are concerned that even with all of this, uh, given our experience in create, become a veto na naman. That is why now. I am asking the good uh, under secretary of NEDA to please provide Congress with what you believe should be uh, included in the zones uh, bills so that uh, so that it will meet the approval of the executive branch. 
And can we propose that this be done not later than Friday of uh, this week, not later than the 14th, so that uh, we can have time to pass this? Baka naman, sabihin mo, we will, have, we will confer with the DOF and budget. Baka po, 2023 na ito. No, no. Hindi naman, hindi naman. Well, so that's chair, why, kung hindi, hindi naman po, 23, kung po pwede po sa biyernes. Uh, hindi naman po. Uh, Atensya yung saka, 2016 pa to eh. Uh, <laughs> talagang, uh, nung naupo naman ako, 2019 pa to. So, uh, you will understand the impatience of both the minority leader and the other senators. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as it, Brion, you're still there. We can, can we make it can we meet before Friday? Or do yes, you want the weekend? Have. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. What? what Friday? Pwede tayo, uh, before Friday, mag meet tayo so we can, we can give the position by Friday. We we'll reach out to school. Madam, Madam Chair, pwede hubang over the weekend na lang? Pwede Monday siguro? No, because Madam Chair, I would like to see what their objections are and would request the with the Chair to set another hearing on Monday in order oh, okay. that we can discuss these proposals of the executive branch and invite again you know i'm sure that it, since we're doing it virtually uh, i am sure that the congress con members of congress and the uh, local executives uh, including the president of the provincial league governor presbytero Binasco, who i see now will be willing to meet again on monday if only uh, we will if only to have a final version of the bill so I would request that uh, the uh, the two agencies submit their position paper by Friday, that we be given a copy and reset this meeting to Monday, uh, so Monday morning, so that the the committee report can be prepared and submitted immediately for plenary discussion because we do not have time, uh, Madam Chair. That's that's basically the reason why we are asking for this. Okay, I said Brian. Can we meet before Friday then so that we can come up with the position paper? Well, you have to submit on Friday. We're actually closed on Friday. The minority leader is very generous um, in truth. And in fact, uh, where where we should impose a Thursday deadline. Yeah, we just you just uh, email it to us, Madam Chair. Email it to us so that we have something to chew over the weekend and on Monday. Okay. Uh, we can uh, discuss this again, but uh, so that we will not be charged with monopolizing this hearing, the good president of the provincial uh, league of governors would like to take the floor, raising his hand. May I request Thank that you very much. I first like to uh, recognize Congressman Didi Savellano, my neighbor, and uh, yes, we recognize the president of the governors' league and my former boss in the governors' league, uh, Governor and Justice Presby Velasco, please. Am I, am I recognized, uh, Madam Chair? Yes, you're recognized. Please proceed. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, pleasant good morning to everyone. Uh, well, uh, I heard the uh, reasons advanced by uh, Asik uh, Brion why uh, DOF uh, uh, is not inclined to grant the, the proposed uh, laws, no? But uh, for one, uh, uh, he, she stated that uh, the X zones will not guarantee economic success. Uh, uh, what we can say is that uh, nobody sure about life, no? <laughs> uh, nothing certain except uh, death and taxes. That's uh, what uh, the DOF is supposed to uh, be good at, no? So uh, uh, for sure, we cannot guarantee success, but. Uh, uh, what we are, we are saying is that uh, just give us a chance or opportunity to make it successful. Uh, uh, it's really a matter of policy and uh, we feel that the LGU should be given the chance at least to uh, uh, do something that uh, may bring uh, uh, much uh, revenues uh, to the uh, LGUs, more particularly the lower rank uh, provinces. No? And... Uh, you also uh, mentioned I was just going to ask very quickly because we have a long agenda. Um, yes. What uh, foreign investors have evinced interest to locate in uh, Marinduque at this juncture? 
Well, uh, we're looking at a uh, 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 businessman uh, in, uh, say, Hong Kong, uh, because uh, we feel that uh, there's an apprehension already on the part of uh, some businessmen uh, uh, in, uh, located in that uh, yeah, special territory of China, no? And uh, also Taiwan and other neighboring countries, no? So uh, that uh, will be our uh, prospective uh, clientele, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, um, Governor and President of the Governor's League, Presby Velasco. So, uh, Madam Chair, may, may I continue to make I'm some, some sorry, comments? Sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, uh, the second reason uh, uh, put forward is that uh, it uh, has not alleviated poverty, but uh, if we have not yet uh, uh, created the economic zone, so uh, we cannot say that uh, it will not alleviate poverty. At least there is a big chance that it may alleviate poverty. Just give us a chance to put it up, and uh, we may just uh, reduce poverty and uh, uh, create more jobs, no? Uh, rather than uh, killing uh, the thing without uh, uh, even creating it is uh, something that uh, may not be uh, uh, good for the LG. No? And the cost uh, uh, benefit ratio, you said that you need a capital outlay of 10 billion, but uh, we would like to state here that uh, our hard-earned victory in Mandanas versus Ochoa, that uh, we will be provided uh, a big chunk uh, uh, from the national taxes uh, is now uh, uh, affected uh, adversely because uh, DOF has, uh, uh, we believe, uh, uh, invalidly deducted uh, certain uh, uh, Deduction uh, has made certain deductions which we consider as uh, not to be uh, special uh, purpose funds, no. And uh, if we compute the uh, total amount of taxes that we feel should not have been deducted uh, in the amount of 89 billion, then 40 percent of that is 35 billion, and uh, that amount is uh, more than enough to cover the uh, uh, the proposed 10 billion. Uh, uh, capital outlay for these economic zones, no? So I, I believe that uh, these uh, proponents, the LGUs who are proposing these uh, economic zones uh, should be given the opportunity to create these economic zones. Uh, definitely, we cannot uh, guarantee success, no? As what you want us to do, because you, even DOF cannot uh, guarantee anything, no? <laughs> But uh, what the LPP is asking is just to give that, give us that opportunity to probably make it successful, no? And these are lower rank. Most many of the proponents are lower rank provinces, no? And uh, we feel that uh, this uh, may be one of the major sources of uh, revenues uh, for uh, these LGUs, and that uh, this may just. Uh, uh, provide the uh, much needed funds for our development, no? So even if uh, it uh, comes out to be a uh, failure uh, in the end, uh, but at least we gave it, we will give it a good try. That is uh, what the LPPs are saying. No? So uh, with that, uh, Madam Chair, we, we uh, uh, eagerly await also the submission of the documents that uh, NEDA and the DOF will present, but uh, that those documents uh, are only uh, a thing of the past, no? What we should look at is uh, uh, how we move forward, no? And uh, let us forget what happened in the past, but uh, the thing is uh, uh, let, uh, let uh, Senate and the House and the, the entire Congress give this uh, LGU at least a chance, no? To enrich itself, no? So that's our position. It's all up to the Senate, no? And uh, if uh, you agree with us, then uh, we will be eternally grateful to this uh, uh, revered chamber, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Governor Velasco. And I think the minority leader is uh, raising his hand, but before he's recognized, yes. may I just observe that uh, for the body, that the Marinduque bill actually is on the same wavelength as the rest of us, saying that the capitalization 
shall be subscribed and paid for by both the national government and the local government units of the Marinduque Eco Zone. They explicitly stated that, as we have in the past for others of this bill. Yes, yeah. Minority Leader, you're now recognized. Yeah. That is consistent with my earlier view that uh, the objection on, 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 uh, on cost-benefit ratio uh, which will take into account the capital outlay that would have to be injected can be addressed if the LGUs are willing uh, to share uh, at least one half of the projected capital outlay cost. And I assume uh, uh, Governor Velasco, in behalf of the Provincial Velasco League, would concur with that, would agree with that. In fact, your Marinduque bill already provides for that. Uh, maybe what we can do is just be a little bit more specific in so far as the sharing is concerned. Is that acceptable to Governor Velasco, Madam Chair? Well, uh, 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 my uh, revered the Senator, uh, let me just uh, talk to my finance committee also. Uh, uh, at this time, uh, I'm not in a position yet to uh, to agree to a 50% share, no? But yes. uh, you know uh, the LGUs are actually uh, uh, yeah, can uh, probably go into some innovative uh, strategies to gain that. But uh, I just want to commit our uh, province yet. But uh, th that can be a uh, subject of the negotiations uh, between the national government and the LGUs. Uh, uh, my revered the uh, former Senate President, uh, especially considering that the national government. Uh, we we'll get a one per one percent share of the taxes to be collected from the, the economic zones. In other words, the concept of cost sharing is acceptable to you. It's a question of how much it will be. Is that a correct understanding? That's agreed, uh, uh, Mr. Senator, my regret Senator. Thank you. Uh, I agree, fully agree with that, Mr. Senator. Yes, if I may, Mr. Uh, uh, governor and the minority leader. The local government units are in this array uh, regarding their era, now called the NTA, due to the computation derived from the DOF. Hindi na lahat ng probinsya at ng syudad at lahat ng LG hindi maalaman kung anong magiging share nila pagkat pagkalaki-laki ng binawas dun sa Mandanas computation. So medyo hilo lahat. Assuming the uh, local governments are not ripped off, I'm certain that they'll be happy to uh, provide the 50-50 split. Uh, further, as I mentioned earlier, pwede naman mag-guarantee ng X number of jobs kung talagang ilan ang papasok ng foreign direct investment kahit minimum or floor lang. Tapos kung hindi mag-work in the next three years, halimbawa, edi tapos na, wala nang eco zone. Payag kami sa lahat ng ganun noon eh. Pero ayaw pa rin pakinggan. So, uh, these are the issues at hand, minority leader. At saka, yes, just another consideration. That's an, just another proposal. So that we can convince NEDA and uh, <laughs> DPF. Maybe we can provide for a sunset clause. Yes. That, uh, you, you know, if after a certain number of years, certain standards are not met, just well, putting an idea on the table, certain yeah. standards are not met, then the uh, the uh, the uh, FIRB would be delegated the authority to abolish the the special processing zone if they cannot come up with a set. If the if the uh, ex zone authority cannot uh, uh, come up and comply with a set of standards agreed upon, we can delegate to the FIRB the power to uh, to uh, abolish if that is uh, if that will make it acceptable to both the LGUs and the DOF. But my, my submission, I am just putting that idea on on the table. Uh, I am not saying that. Uh, we are endorsing that, but just to look for a compromise so that this can be uh, approved. Yes, that's correct. Uh, I think uh, these proposals and even uh, absolute guarantees of number of jobs, uh, dollar uh, uh, investments and so on, 
can actually be made by some of the LGUs who already have investors at bay. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Minority Leader. Um, I think the same issues arise with regard to the uh, Oriental Mindoro, Paluan, Paluan, and Occidental Mindoro Special Eco Zone. Magkakatabi ang ating mga island provinces at hindi talaga nabibiyayaan ng anuman development. So uh, um, if there are no more comments from uh, Marin Duque, are we uh, okay Madam to Chair. proceed to the rest? Sorry. Yes, DEN. Uh, Madam from... Chair. Yes, sorry. Who's that? <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just uh, would like to have a manifestation. Yes, please. Of the Honorable Governor. Governor uh, saan po? Uh, Governor Velasco po from uh, Marin Duque for the proposal yes. on the creation of Maresa. I just okay. want to, to, to air, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Governor, uh, doon po sa portion ng uh, Section 15 on the power of the Maresa uh, item N under the Section 15, Powers and Function. Uh, ito lang po ang uh, apprehension ko kasi uh, uh, according to this uh, item N, the, uh, the, the power of the function of the regulatory function of the DNR will be delegated to Maresa. Uh, this, is, uh, this is our comment po. Uh, the regulatory function should be remain uh, with the DNR kasi ito po yung mga, mga permits. These are regulation pertaining to the leases including po yung cutting permit. Now siguro um, Madam Chair, uh, if there is one thing that the proposed Maresa Authority would help us, the DNR would be on the protection of the natural resources. At uh, siguro po yung mga regulatory functions should remain with the DNR para po magkaroon na lang po tayo ng arrangement on how we can uh, properly manage po the natural resources within the, uh, the area of the proposed Maresa. Ilang so the DNR is uh, suggesting a PAMBI-like setup where uh, the local governments are also consulted. Is that correct? Madam Chair, that's correct, yeah, Madam Chair. Sige, yes, Governor Velasco, please. Yeah, uh, I, I don't, I, uh, am, I correct, be, uh, am I correct to say that uh, uh, the, the, the provision uh, being discussed is letter N? Uh, uh, am I correct? Uh, is that letter N or letter M? Letter N, Madam Chair, uh, sir. Uh, N? Go. Opa. That's uh, in Manila because uh, that pertains to security for Mares, no? It has no relation at all to the functions of DNR. Are probably you're referring to letter N uh, as in uh, uh, Norway? Is, are you referring yes, to letter chair. N? Yes, sir. Yes, Governor. Yes, uh, letter N, we, Norway. Uh, we, we can uh, uh, discuss this with the DNR, but uh, you know, there is now the policy of the government to devolve uh, uh, certain functions from the national agency, no? That's why uh, we uh, said uh, the, we will be given the, the authority also to protect, preserve, and maintain our forests, beaches, corals, etc., no? And, uh, but uh, that will be in, uh, under the supervision also and monitoring of, uh, of the DNR, no? So that's the intention, no? Uh, right now, uh, we're still in the process of discussing the devolution of the functions. So, uh, just to so that the, the Maresa will have a full authority to quickly act on certain matters. No, uh, I suggest we maintain this, but uh, this will be subject to the uh, supervisory and monitoring powers of the DNR, uh, uh, Madam Chair. We submit. Yes, I uh, I think this can be negotiated and certainly a PAMBI-like structure where everyone sits, but the ultimate permitting still derives from the DENR uh, can be set up. But certainly for emergencies, the local government has uh, some power to act and act very, very quickly. Thank you. So we'll take that into consideration. Uh, DENR, thank you very much. Thank so, you, Madam uh, Chair. Thank you. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes, Can uh, I make Robert. a comment? Yes, uh, well, uh, I heard a good proposal from uh, the majority floor leader that the, there should be a sunset provision uh, for the 
operation of uh, these uh, proposed economic, special economic zones. But uh, I would like to suggest that uh, a longer period of time uh, uh, be given uh, to lower rank provinces no, in uh, the creation and the oh, establishment and operation of the this special economic zones. Uh, these lower rank provinces uh, have uh, smaller resources and uh, this may just uh, it may just take a little more time for them to really okay. make it operational and successful. Uh, but I fully agree with the, the majority floor leader that uh, there should be a sunset provision. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I am the minority floor leader, Mr. Governor, not the majority. <laughs> I vote many times with the majority, but I basically am a minority. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm glad uh, I to hear the statement of the good governor. At least the concept of a sunset clause is acceptable, except that we define it clearly so that the realities of the uh, stage of economic development of its host province will be recognized and the, uh, and, and the sunset clause is adjusted accordingly in terms of when the sunset will take place. Yes, certainly. And uh, we are all fully aware that Region 4B has uh, <laughs> really lagged behind. And uh, poverty in incidence in uh, the uh, island provinces have continued to remain very, very high. So, talagang kailangan tulungan. So, uh, with that, we go to the other neighboring provinces in 4B, and that's Oriental Mindoro. Uh, Madam Chair. Occidental Mindoro. Yes, if you don't mind. Yes, Congresswoman Baronda, I know that you arrived. But yes. Nene Sato came here even ahead of me. Yes, Madam Chair. Yes. Yes, if you don't mind, can we just uh, carry on with uh, uh, Oriental Mindoro and the rest that are in the queue? Sure. Uh, okay, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much, Jam Jam. Sorry about that. All right. Oriental Mindoro, Paluan, and Occidental Mindoro. Ang problema rito, as we're fully aware, unahan ko na kayo, eh magkakadikit yan, ano? Uh, Magkakatabi-tabi. So, this is the problem. Uh, is there duplication? Uh, will it be able to sustain and uh, defray all uh, DOFs and NEDA's worst nightmares? So, uh, Congresswoman Nene, ang dami nito eh, tatlo eh. Uh, yes, um, uh, my, my, I have two bills, uh, Madam Chairman, uh, that is establishing a special economic zone in the municipalities of San Jose and Magsaysay. Those are two neighboring uh, municipalities and one uh, establishing as an economic zone in the municipality of Paluan. Uh, but uh, in your question that there will be duplication and give uh, the DOF a nightmare on, on, on how we can uh, uh, make this uh, two or three uh, uh, economic zones viable. Uh, for the Paluan, uh, we have a specific uh, purpose for this that is uh, uh, to afford the allocation uh, for, uh, uh, for ship building. And this is not just a regular shipbuilding because even before we filed this uh, bill, uh, we were already in preliminary discussion with some medium-sized uh, shipbuilders from Japan and other countries because we they were um, they were uh, already they already uh, went around the country and they uh, found that the cove in Paluan is the most suitable for uh, dockyard and shipbuilding facilities for medium-sized uh, ships, not the big uh, luxury-type cruise uh, ships that are being now uh, um, uh, built in, in other other uh, shipbuilding facilities. Are we referring and, to the same type of uh, setup as we have in Balamban in Cebu, the uh, Japanese shipbuilders yes. there? Yes, yes, but ours will cater to the medium-sized shipbuilders. And as I said, even before we filed this, we were already in uh, preliminary discussions with them uh, under the auspices of the Board of Investments. Is there any, and, way to, uh, is there any way to include 
this in the occidental Mindoro, if we just enlarge the footprint of occidental Mindoro so that it encompasses Paluan, allowing shipbuilding as one of its uh, activities, pwede ba yun yeah. or masyado nang magulo? Baka masyado na pong magulo. Kasi yung, yun naman, kasi yung Paluan po is located in the northernmost tip of our yeah, province. So I um, po, ma malaki po yung probinsya namin uh, in terms of land area. And yun po namang sa San Jose and Magsaysay will cater to a different kind of, of location and uh, investors. So uh, we're basically... Uh, what investors do you envision uh, coming in uh, in the San Jose Magsaysay area? It's basically uh, agri-based because, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we have uh, the Occidental Mindoro has already proven to be always in the top five in, in palai production and all the uh, uh, agricultural uh, activities that we have um, entered into. And uh, we are now uh, the um, recognized uh, uh, source of, uh, of tuna and, uh, and uh, first class of uh, aquamarine resources. And so that's basically uh, the, uh, the thrust of our uh, uh, special economic zone in the municipalities. It's an agri, it's an agri uh, eco zone. Yes, 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 Madam Chair. Building eco zone. Because, uh, Madam Chair, uh, if we just remain as an agricultural province, uh, I mean, our experience in the past uh, has, 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 has told us that we cannot just maintain being an agricultural province. We have to branch out to agri-industrialization. Thank you, Nene. And uh, is there uh, any representative from Oriental Mindoro who can comment? Because inevitably, I'm certain that the DOF and NEDA will say, uh, ang lapit ng Oriental Mindoro, tatlo tatlo na yan. So can we... Uh, Ask also, Nene, is there anyone here from Oriental Mindoro? Or, or are you aware of their uh, position on uh, your two proposals? I am not uh, familiar with the proposal of the Oriental. But, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we are a big island province. We are the seventh largest uh, pro uh, island in the province, uh, in, in the country. And if you can the map of the philippines you will see that the island of mindoro is in the heart of the of, of of the country and it is directly facing japan and china that makes us strategically located okay thank you um madam chair yes, yes committee secretary is there anyone else oh i think the office of congressman umali uh wishes to comment on mindoro oriental Yes, Senator, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning to everyone. Um, uh, I just uh, would like to read, Sada, po, the, the um, message and explanation of Kong Umali in his behalf. Um, but uh, in, in, in our yes, call... Yes, in receipt. If you could just uh, focus on the salient points, please. Yes, yes. Um, Madam Chair, I just want to uh, emphasize that the province of Oriental Mindoro um, is, the gate, is, is known as the gateway to the south since um, we, uh, the, the province of Oriental Mindoro, uh, the strong republic nautical highway is located in the province of Oriental Mindoro. So it, it practically connects the mainland Luzon to the uh, island provinces in Vis Visayas and Mindanao. So um, uh, having a special economic zone in the municipality of Mansale is very strategic uh, in terms of the, the location uh, since um, we have the role on role off. And uh, in, the, in the municipality of Mansale, we also have a port there, uh, which will uh, make the, the transportation of goods uh, coming from the special eco zone um, uh, accessible. So, um, and um, since the province of Oriental Mindori is very large uh, in terms of uh, yung, um, yung land uh, area, um, it, uh, I, we believe, Your Honor, the office, uh, uh, Congressman Umali believes that uh, uh, it is still uh, viable and it is still um, very um, uh, advantageous, no? Uh, to the province if we have this uh, uh, special eco zone in the province. 
Okay, thank you, thank you very Madam much. Chair. Yes, thank you very much. If there's no one else from uh, the Tumindoros, Nene, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, we would just want to appeal to the Department of Finance, to the DBM, and to NEDA. <laughs> Please do not shoot down our dreams. Uh, yung lahat po ng local government units, nahirapan po kaming lahat nitong pandemic. And this is our only chance to recover economically. At wag niyo naman po kaming husgahan kaagad nang hindi niyo pa po nakikita ang aming kakayahan. Yun lang po at marami pong salamat. May iyak na ako na sa ating sitwasyon. Uh, thank you very much. We call on um, the uh, Deputy Speaker, uh, Johnny Pimentel, who's patiently waited all along. The same problem occurs. Uh, Suriga del Sur will have two economic zones under existing proposals. There's Suriga del Sur, special economic zone. While here at the hearing, we have the establishment of the Bislig Economic Zone. These will be in two competing congressional districts, and I'm certain that DOF and NEDA will raise the same objection. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning to everyone, especially Senator Franklin Drillon. I'd also like to acknowledge, Madam Chair, the presence of the city officials of Bislig City or her ear uh, present to give their full support to the bill. Uh, before I read the explanatory note, may I manifest, Madam Chair, my support to the proposal of Senator Drillon uh, that we put a clause uh, to the economic zones. I, I fully understand the apprehension and objection of the UF na baka hindi maging successful economic zone. But maybe since you will be meeting, uh, I was listening to the discussion earlier, uh, NEDA and DOF will be setting a meeting with your committee. Maybe you could discuss with them uh, that we can set parameters or standards that if that it could not be met for a certain period of time, then the economic zone can be terminated or whatever action the DOF uh, DOA may deem uh, appropriate. Uh, yun lang naman ang apprehension nila, na baka hindi successful, it will be a burden to the government, no taxes will come in. So maybe you can sit down and find a solution to this because as what uh, Kong Nenia said, we in the provinces really need this, especially in our case, uh, that PICO, because the area in uh, this, uh, the proposal of the economic zone is the, in the area of Pico, which was closed a few years ago. But the infrastructure facilities are still there. So I fully support the proposal of uh, Senator Dillon. So without much further ado, may I read the uh, uh, explanatory note, House Bill number 4285. Johnny, act, before, before you go that, please? Minority yeah. leader, nahawa na ako kay Governor Velasco. Minority leader, not majority leader. Oh. Did I say majority leader? Just, just, uh, just in support. Of, thank you. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, minority, I stand corrected. I'm just going to say this. Two, or two things. Number one, uh, we just recently passed a law which would have a sunset clause, and that is the Department of uh, uh, Migrant Workers. There is a sunset clause which says that after a certain number of years, a reorganization committee will review whether we would still need a department for migrant workers, given the fact that this is not a policy of the government to export labor. The second point is that we have an existing uh, structure in the government, uh, Madam Chair, the uh, GCG, uh, the, uh, which, is, we, which we wrote and which is authorized to, 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 to review the performance of a GOCC, uh, including uh, export zones, uh, or excluding, but I'm sorry, it excludes export zones. But uh, we can authorize the yeah. GCG to review and make a recommendation to the president because this is part of their functions. So this is not a new proposal. This is an existing structure which we can tap uh, and 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 and, and uh, be uh, tasked to make a review after a certain 
period of time in accordance with the standards that we set in the law. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Congressman Pimentel, your audio, please. Yes, Madam Chair, and that is exactly um, what I said earlier, that we must support the proposal of Senator Trilon. Uh, you could uh, probably uh, include this in the agenda in your meeting. Na pag hindi successful, then uh, there will be a sunset clause. Uh, there will be the special economic zones that will be created will be reviewed after a certain of years. If in the meet your criteria or standards, then it will be terminated or whatever appropriate action uh, that should be taken. So what that about, should. What about the that, question that uh, Surigao del Sur cannot sustain two echo zones? Uh, because this is a second echo zone, Bislig Special Economic uh, Act, versus the uh, previous one that we heard in this committee, Surigao del Sur. Um, is it uh, a, uh, there a, was, a there is a bill, yes, there uh, are, charge? there are, but uh, I believe that Bislig will be more uh, suitable because, as I said earlier, the peak of uh, infrastructure facilities so are there. still in place. Uh -oh. We have uh, we have two ports. We have an airport. Uh, but no offense to Congressman Pichai, their situation is different. It's more on agricultural. But maybe, as I've said, um, uh, we can discuss this with DOF. But I will proceed, Madam Chair, because there are other uh, uh, sponsors waiting. So House Bill uh, Number Four Two Eight Five, Madam Chair an act establishing a special economic zone in the city of Bislig, province of Srigo del Sur, creating for the purpose the Bislig Economic Zone Authority, appropriating funds thereof and other purposes. The city of Bislig stands as the first city of Srigo del Sur, as the seat of Paper Industries Corporation, PICOP, one of the then major industries of the Philippines and the largest or a paper mill in uh, Asia. It was both a national center for trade and commerce. Nevertheless, with the cessation of pickup operations in Surigao del Sur in the 1990s, so did the decline of the steady economic growth in the province. Special economic zones were created to lay alternative areas of investment across the Philippines. They are intended to disperse economic development which has been confined in the main metropolitan areas. By introducing industrialization, rural communities are given equitable access to the said growth, giving its people employment opportunities in growth. The same also contributes to the overall economic development of the country in establishing competitive centers. This bill, Madam Chair, seeks to reintroduce decentralization self-reliance and self-sustenance to a geographic periphery of Surigao del Sur. This proposed creation of the Bislig City a Special Economic Zone shall again harness Bislig City and the contiguous areas within and around their immediate vicinities, maximizing them as an engine of a socio-economic development in Caraga region. This approval of, the approval of this bill is earnestly sought. Madam Chair, thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Well taken. And I hope uh, that uh, we'll be able to justify these uh, two uh, economic zones. After all, there are provinces with many, many more than uh, mere two economic zones and all prospering quite happily. So uh, with that, I recognize my neighbor with a uh, similar competitive uh, uh, bill. And that is the Ilocos Sur Special Economic Zone. We have Congressman Vivi Savellano. Yes, Vivi, are, uh, are you online? I can see you. Ay, yung audio lang po. Congressman Vivi, wala pong audio. We don't hear you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. very much, Madam Chair. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, may just request that the exploratory note be adopted to uh, save time. And uh, 
uh, I would like also to appeal to uh, the DOF and uh, NEDA to please uh, give us a chance. Because, uh, <laughs> because our forefathers, they were using this uh, place before. That's right. If we look at history, nandiyan ho yung trade natin eh, in Salumagi Port. And uh, Salumagi Port is uh, the typhoon shelter of the north. And uh, if you look at the... Uh, uh, he, if you look at his history during World War II, ginamit na po yan. And uh, even uh, even after World War II, uh, the area was uh, used to uh, transport the uh, sakada, the uh, Filipinos in Hawaii. Jan hu sila lahat, six thousand of them. Uh, Jan hu sumakay. And uh, the abel that we, we are uh, the handwoven cloth that we're uh, we are uh, producing, uh, it was used as a sail by the. Uh, by the Spanish before, and it it is the first product that was embargoed in uh, in Spain. Yung uh, belpo natin. So meaning to say, this place, this place, uh, it was a place where we uh, trade and uh, have commerce. So now we're up. Uh, ito trabaho lang nila to. Eh. Wala pa tayong mga rules nun eh. But uh, the thing is, we were using this. So give us a chance to prove. Wag naman na uh, patayin ka kasi yung mga ganitong proposal because it. Uh, Yung mga ninunungan natin, nagagawa nila eh. Now we have so many, uh, uh, nandiyan na, high-tech na tayo. Mas, mas, uh, I think, mas uh, mag-improve tayo and uh, it will benefit the country. Yun lang, Madam Chair. Amen. Full support. Yes, uh, we are in, uh, uh, in recognition of the Salamagi Cove and certainly Abel is probably one of uh, the first uh, incidents of uh, outsourcing to a third world country that was bad. Madam Chair, uh, yeah, Madam, Madam Chair uh, can I just include? And uh, sana ang tignan ng uh, NEDA because uh, uh, in Ilocos, we are producing uh, garlic, onions. But if we look at the data, we are now importing 93% uh, of garlic. Eh, yan yung mga spices ng, ng inaan natin nun eh, ang uh, tinatransport natin, onions, garlic, etc. So, dapat doon sila tumulong how to uh, help us uh, make this viable. Diba? Huwag, huwag yung patayin na, na, na hindi pa lahat yung nasusubukan. Because, again, history, we should, ano, we should uh, look at these things, yung, ano, yung historical side, para ma malaman natin kung ano man nangyari noon, ngayon. Okay. Ilang madam, Chair? Yes, thank you very much, Congressman. And you can imagine uh, the reaction I derived from DOF and NEDA when we first proposed the windmills. They were certain we were mad and Don Quixote. So uh, maybe there was a lack of imagination. In this case, there's a lack of historical knowledge. Okay, we go now. We have only two minutes. Madam, Madam, another lang. Yes, Madam, what? another lang. Because uh, uh, ito yung, ano, uh, in Ilocos, we're famous for the tobacco industry. And we're importing 66%, uh, we're only producing 33%. And the tobacco industry, we are, we are contributing 148 billion sa, sa government natin. So ito yung madapat tingnan na Neda, napatulungan tayo. Kasi pag uh, napatay lahat itong mga ito, baka saan natin kukunin itong mga ito? And uh, the, the tobacco industry, we're helping the, uh, the uh, universal health care. Di ba? Tama. Madam Chair, so, the... yun, tulungan tayo. Yeah. See, yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you. Yes, Minority Leader, there's a unanimous um, support for uh, your uh, suggestions. So uh, we call on the last remaining two, uh, Bacolod Special Echo Zone. Uh, sorry, three pala. Then Northern Bohol, Metro Iloilo, kung sinong nandyan. Yes, Bacolod, please. Chair. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Magandang tangali sa lahat sa mga uh, kasama ko sa House as well as a uh, minority leader. Uh, Madam Chair, to save time, we, I may manifest that the uh, explanatory note be, uh, made as a sponsorship speech. And very briefly, Madam Chair, just a background. Uh, this bill uh, was inspired nung nakausap ko si minority leader way back uh, July or June of 2019, no? nag-usap kami ni Senator Delon and nagtanong siya sa akin kung 
ano yung vision, ano yung plan with regards to the old airport sa Bacolod. No? Then, nag-mention sa akin the possibility of uh, having uh, a special economic zone dito sa Bacolod. So, after that uh, discussion with a good uh, Senate Minority Leader, I filed a bill in Congress which later on was uh, approved and ito na nga, we're having this hearing. The intention, Madam Chair, of this uh, representation in uh, a sponsorship in filing this bill is that uh, uh, for quite some time, uh, dito sa amin sa Bacolod and the entire Negros, we have been trying gumagawa ng paraan kung paano uh, makapag-shift no? from, uh, gradually from the sugar industry to other uh, forms of uh, source of income ng mga tao dito. No? And uh, also, nung na-mention kanina about the government's uh, spending or uh, investment, uh, merong ginagawa ang national government dito sa Bacolod. This is the Bacolod Negros uh, Economic Highway. This is about a 21-kilometer highway in Bacolod City uh, with uh, the intention of uh, opening up uh, the economy. So gumastos na yung national government ng billions of pesos for this uh, Bacolod Negros uh, Economic Highway. Dumadaan to sa gitna ng mga sugarcane fields, ng mga shendas. So I think it's uh, ripe, uh, Madam Chair, just to inform NEDA as well as the uh, Department of Finance that uh, Bacolod City is ripe for this kind of uh, uh, economic uh, zone, uh, Madam Chair. So, yun lang po, we are asking the uh, consideration of uh, NEDA as well as the uh, Department of Finance na bigyan naman ng pagkakataon yung mga cities and uh, provinces na uh, maalaw no, in having this kind of uh, investment as well as opening up also our economy to foreign investments, uh, Madam Chair. No? So thank you very much. And uh, if you will ask anong possible na mga foreign investments, uh, Negros Occidental is now being positioned uh, when it comes to renewable energy. So there's a possibility of uh, uh, those solar panels being manufactured in Bacolod, uh, as well as yung BPOs namin dito masyado ng marami, uh, Madam Chair. So we can transition for AI, so we can prepare Bacolod City for these kinds of uh, investments, uh, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Congressman Casataya. That's uh, very exciting. Minority Leader, please. Yes, I fully support this measure, Madam Chair, especially in the case of Bacolod. I have, yes, I confirm that I proposed to Greg before that they have a very big government asset which up to this time has not been utilized. And that is the old runway, yeah. the old runway of the, you know, of, of the Bacolod Airport. In my case in Iloilo, we were able to convert it into a, a, a private sector development. And now we have a booming commercial area uh, when we sold 52 hectares of the old airport. Uh, I was proposing to Greg that maybe they can examine closely uh, what this that this the then government asset can be utilized for economic activity and here the economic zone is just a, a perfect fit if i may call it uh, because then uh, you need uh, some area uh, contiguous area and the airport uh, land area would be just ideal i would i would uh, i would uh, strongly support this and again, I would repeat, uh, the, the airport facility, the old airport facility would provide just the right asset wherein you can, uh, you can locate the proposed uh, uh, processing zone in Bacolod or uh, export zone in Bacolod and really spur the development of Bacolod. I have value added to the sugar and, uh, and, um, and provide a better location. And to, uh, to attract investors, so here uh, the 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 the, uh, the cost benefit ratio is very clearly in That's favor right. of the government. You have a dead government asset which will now be utilized as a as a uh, as export zone, and that is why I fully concur with the proposal of uh, of Congressman Greg. Thank you, Congressman Casataya. Uh, 
would have cheered. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. This is very much directed to Asak Brion. Uh, in the case of the Bacolod Special Economic Zone, there's a dead, uh, there are several dead uh, government assets, not only the old airport, its runway, the uh, huge economic highway that's been uh, built uh, across sugarcane fields doing nothing as it were and then you have the very vibrant bpo landscape so skills and uh, other development uh, have already begun and renewable energy has already uh, uh, started up. So certainly this is something we would like to encourage. I hear, I think I see there are representatives from the city of Bacolod that would uh, like to speak and uh, support the measure as well. Uh, Comsec, um, I'd like to know who's there. Yes, po. the Bacolod business, uh, business development uh, representative. Okay, sir, uh, if you could make it brief, uh, we would like to know how this would help the uh, business development uh, uh, ratchet up in Bacolod City. Maraming pagsalamat po, uh, Madam Chair. This is Attorney uh, Renisito Novero, Chairman of the Committee on Trade and Commerce and Industry of the Sangguni Ampan Sod. And I speak also in behalf of the Honorable City Mayor Amir Bingenardia and our Vice Mayor and the Sangoni Ampantong Sod and our business development community in the city. And let me first express our profound appreciation for this legislative development in the Senate and the Congress of the Philippines. This is a very much welcome development. And let me go directly into the substantive provisions of uh, the proposed bill. And number one, uh, your honors, um, this is in relation to sections three, four, and 10 of the bill, which somehow provide for the board of directors of the BCESA. It seems my understanding that the city mayor of Bacolod is not specifically provided for as one of the members of the board of directors. I respectfully suggest that it be made specific that the city mayor who may be the city mayor shall automatically become a member of the board of directors, considering that the economic zone is within the venue of uh, Bacolod City. So is that the opposition of the business development uh, group that dapat kasama yung siyudad? Hindi po. Uh, kasi ang um, nakalagay rito sa section 10 po. That's right. So what is your position? You'd like to be a uh, part of the Ecozone or not? Yung city of Bacolod? Yeah, the Bacolod. Yeah, Bacolod city. The city of Bacolod should really be part of the economic zone. And in that okay. wise... We respectfully suggest that the city mayor of Bacolod be automatically be made as a member of the board of directors. Nakalagay po nito kasi one of the mayors of the municipalities covered by the eco zone shall be member of the board of directors. But uh, pero municipality nga lang, wala nga yung ciudad. Ah, uh, wala nga po, wala nga po. Kaya my suggestion is kung maari po ay automatic na po yung membership ng city mayor ng Bacolod in the that's right. board of directors. Yes, Kasi, I think that's reasonable. We'll take notice of that. Uh, okay lang ba sa city of Bacolod? Uh, Sang ayaw naman si Mayor Bing? Opo. In fact, uh, this is also his uh, suggestion. And okay. I am respectfully uh, articulating yeah. this in his behalf and in behalf of uh, the city. All right. Minority leader. Yes, yes, I fully, I fully concur. Uh, that's the ideal situation. Oh, that the mayor, uh, be part of the board of directors. However, I invite the attention of the committee to a case in the Supreme Court where I was the one involved, and this is the uh, membership uh, of the mayor of Alongapo in the Subic uh, okay. uh, Subic Bay uh, of, of Metropolitan Authority (SBMA). And uh, if I recall correctly, the Supreme Court uh, struck it down as, uh, in con as uh, not being constitutional. I am I'm just talking from memory. Uh, as I said, I am in favor of, uh, of, uh, 
of the city mayor being a member of the board. But let us review that Supreme Court decision and see if the prohibition there is applicable and what kind of provision can we, uh, uh, can we adopt which will uh, avoid that uh, prohibition that the Supreme Court imposed in the case uh, of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority. I know that case because I was a respondent as a <laughs> secretary. Oh, I see, I see. Yes, uh, unfortunately, the uh, tension remains uh, between Senator uh, Dick Gordon and the mayor of Alonga for to the present day. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Congressman Greg. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I will submit to the decision of uh, the committee no, uh, regarding the matter, uh, Honorable General. I thank uh, the Honorable Councillor Novero no, for manifesting the support of the city in this very important uh, bill for us, no, for Bacology. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, the Thank member. you very much, Greg. Thank you very much, uh, Tony. Yeah. Yes. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. You were my brother's classmate in the UP College of Law when you graduated in 1984. Oh, sorry, <laughs> can I catch his name? Yeah. Uh, Reynaldo Novero, you call him uh, yes. Ray. Ray, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Separate section, same class, thank you. Yeah, one, one more item, your honors. Uh, we see that somehow there is no specific provision as to how much will definitely come into the city of Bacolod by way of an increment from the total or gross income of the uh, uh, economic zone, nakalagay rin kasi mga 2% or may three from the national gross income, but there is no definitive delineation as to the share of the province in the city of Bacolod. Uh, we are respectfully suggesting na magiging klaro po sana yung uh, incremental uh, revenue for, uh, para po sa uh, Luncod ng Bacolod. Kung maaari, ang 2% ay directly nasa Bacolod ng po, directamente, then maybe another share for the province of Negros Occidental. Okay. I suppose these are all subject to negotiation. And since we're already in Bacolod, uh, shall we finally deal with uh, Metro Iloilo as uh, Congresswoman Jam Jam has been patiently waiting? Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair, Your Honors. Thank you very Thank you much. Very. I think somebody from the city of Bacolod is raising his hand. Comsec, please. May I have the name that... Uh, he's uh, the city mayor. Uh, he's the city mayor po of Bacolod <laughs> City. No. Uh, thank you very much. That's not Bing. Uh, there's no audio, please. Who is it? Yes. George Zulueta, Madam. Madam. Yes, Yes, can we raise the volume a little bit? You're very faint. Ah, okay, sige. Ah, okay. Meron lang ho isang uh, uh, greetings from Mayor Bing ho. Uh, <laughs> you were you attended one of our uh, city development council meetings. So, uh, uh, I'm the vice chairman of the city. That's development. correct. That's correct. I I remember Mr. Sulueta with all the barangay captains. Thank you very much. Happy New Year, by the way, to everyone. Yes. Uh, isang section lang po, uh, we would like to uh, clarify. Uh, section 9G, uh, which allows games and amusements, recreational facilities subject to the approval of supervision of the uh, PAGCOR. Ang question dito is, uh, does sure. this mean that POGO will be allowed to uh, operate in the, in the economic zone? So, ang gusto ko lang uh, sana... Uh, we will put up a, we will uh, submit a position paper with regards to the operations of BOGO in the economic zones. Yun lang po ang that we would like to clarify. Yes, thank you very much. We'll welcome the city's uh, development uh, officer's position on the POGOs. Yes, uh, Minority Leader. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, with this statement of the representative from the city of Bohol, let me make of record that I will object to any provision which will grant to the uh, uh, authority uh, the power to issue gaming licenses because that will uh, lead to the proliferation of this uh, uh, of, of, of this uh, 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 operations including pogo and uh, that is subject to a separate debate 
uh, whether or not we should allow this. But my view, Madam Chair, I might as well make it of record that I am objecting to any provision which will uh, uh, authorize the uh, the uh, board of directors of the uh, economic zones authority or the uh, economic zones authority to issue gaming licenses. Just for the record. Madam yes, Chair. I understand, and we've had the uh, unfortunate experiences of both CESA and APECO that uh, will prove that we should be really very, very prudent about uh, this type of delegation. Uh, Congressman Greg, you have uh, any uh, opinion about the POGO presence? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I joined the manifestation and the position of the good uh, minority leader, uh, Honorable Chair, regarding those uh, provisions, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And there's no need for consultation. We will delete it in the committee report. Hindi na nang kasali ang mga pogo-pogo at saka yung gaming. Ha? Okay, yeah. thank you. That's the, That was quick. Thank All you. right. Well, gusto eh. All right. Congresswoman Baroda, please, uh, Jam Jam. Sorry, it's taken so long. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you so much. Um, Especially to our very own mentor leader, Senator Frank Rulon. Thank you for fighting for Ego Zones. I would just like to express my frustrations with the possession of the OF over our bills. And uh, to think that this will promote diverse economic activity in the region, different regions. The stand of opposition over the bills, Madam Chair, is arbitrary as it generates all Ego Zones. And I believe that each region should yield, uh, could yield varying results if uh, given the opportunity to have an echo zone. We are amenable to any developments, Madam, any amendments, Madam Chair, and I hope that the OF will uh, help us as this is in keeping with the developmental trust of the government in bringing regional economic development in the regions, now outside the regions or outside NCR. If it is the allocation sharing is needed, uh, we would like to propose now that our respective local government units will be given ample of the time to propose, uh, Madam Chair. So with this, Madam Chair, um, once again, thank you for your support. Let us keep on fighting. Wag po tayo mag-give up. Kaya niyo po yan ng ating majority floor leader, uh, our very own Senator Frank Delon. Thank you. Thank you. I was just going to ask very quickly, sorry, um, What's the footprint of this uh, Milo Echo Zone? Because it begins in the city of Iloilo with the international port, and then it includes a lot of public land all the way to La Paz. Gano ba kalaki to? At sa kakasama ba yung airport dito na medyo nalilito lahat eh sa sa footprint? Well, actually, Madam Chair, no, um, we will we will uh, the final uh, meets and bounds of the of this proposed bill, we will submit it to you, Madam Chair. Okay, and the the minority Chair. leader was uh, raising his hand, please. Yes, yes Senator Drillon. Uh, the, the, uh, the authority or the, uh, the proposed zone would be limited by the political boundary of the city right. of Ilo. How, yes, yes and uh, uh, how big is the zone envisioned to be in terms of hectares? Well, actually, um, this is sort of uh, two bills in one. There's a creation of something called Metro Iloilo. Now, at the same time, there's also a special economic zone. So yeah. I'd like to be clarified so we can defend this to the DOF and the NEDA both. Yes. yes, actually, Madam Chair, we we commissioned a technical study on this, and initially, para po mas madale para sa atin, um, ginawa na po muna yung 50 hectares po within the city of Iloilo. One five or five zero? Fifty five zero po. Okay. You know, you know, my comment is that it's difficult to look for fifty hectares contiguous in the city of Iloilo. I mean, that's, that's, you know, the last uh, uh, contiguous area of 50 hectares, oh, the airport. 50 hectares to be precise, is the Iloilo Airport. That's why we were able to command a good price, 1.2 billion. I don't think you can find a similar 
contiguous area in the city of Iloilo. May I suggest, having said that, may I suggest that uh, the uh, that the political boundary of the city should not be a limitation on the ability to put up a zone. Let's uh, you know you call it Metro Iloilo. Let's uh, include uh, the let's not limit it to the political boundary of the city, but include the whole province. Uh, Madam Chair, I uh, submit to the proposal of our majority floor leader. At the same minority leader, I mean, <laughs> Madam Chair. Yes. Um, the I think the municipality of La Paz is included already, and uh, perhaps if you could a more clear-cut uh, map or definition, we would be able to uh, better examine this because we're not clear where this 50 hectares is going to be derived yeah. from. La Paz is a district of the city. It's, well, so, it's just part of Iloilo also. It doesn't have 50 yes, hectares at all. Alisin natin yung, yung, uh, yung, yung political boundary uh, so that you can have uh, a more opportunity because the benefit will not only be for the city but for the entire province, the entire island of Panay. And yet, the uh, political boundary can be a limitation in terms of finding 50 hectares of contiguous land. Wala kang makikita ron. <laughs> Kailangan lumabas ng syudad. Wala na yata lupang ganyan. So, John, John, if you could just uh, yes. give us an idea of where this 50 hectares ano will be derived. At saka yung 50 hectares, maliit yan ha. Parating sinasabi, dapat may yes. lupang. Ma Madam Chair? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Madam Chair, in our technical note or in the study, we we plan the actually plan to uh, to consider um rec reclamation of uh, the said area along the the proposed areas po in the city but okay. nevertheless po yung suggestion po ni ni mentor for leader um we submit to his ano kasi mas uh, alam niya naman po yung terrain din dito sa Iloilo Okay, sige, konting, uh, konting detalye lang para we can include this in the committee report kasi mukhang uh, hindi pa klaro yung mapa para mabigay natin yan at uh, makikipagbunuan pa tayo sa DOF at NEDA. <laughs> Madam Chair, I will just uh, actually for the purpose of uh, before having this uh, bill uh, approved, problema lang po, nagkaroon tayo ng pandemic, I would like I love, would like to really see ano, our mentor for leader kasi alam natin na makakatulong siya. But hopefully po, mag-zoom meeting na lang kami before the, this po. Hopefully next week. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm sure you should. I, 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 I think you should just uh, uh, take his guidance and expand out of uh, Iloilo City given that uh, the title of the bill after all is Metro Iloilo. Okay, last but not least. Please, Madam Chair. Yes. I'm sorry. I think there's a Northern Bacolod. Ah, no, Northern Bohol. Mali naman to. Okay, Northern Bohol. Is there anyone who's uh, uh, representing uh, Congressman Aumentado, although he sent a message? Uh -huh. yes, yes, Senator. He sent a message already. Nobody is representing Northern Bohol. Okay. Uh, they are just observers now, pero nobody. But he is representing right, Comsec, um, just by way of information, is there another Bohol Echo Zone at present? Wala pa po, Senator. Parang wala pa eh. Ingit na ingit na nga sila wala sa pa Cebu po. eh. Pagkarami-rami. Lahat na focus sa Cebu. Samantalang may Panglao Airport na pagkaganda-ganda. So I think it's uh, also uh, important that we look at this. Therefore, um, we have no more uh, bills left on our agenda. May I enjoin all the uh, different uh, proponents to please uh, start consulting with the uh, different government agencies. In the meantime, uh, I will await the submissions of both NEDA and the DOF regarding uh, the uh, guidelines that they can propose so that we are not met with the constant and uh, uniform objections to all the ECHOZONE bills thus wasting everyone's time. Thank you very much to everyone. And most of all, our minority leader was actively participated, the president of the Governor's League, and uh, the deputy speaker, Congresswoman Sato, Congressman uh, Gasataya, 
Um, and uh, D.B. Savellano, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Thank you so much. First hearing of the year. Maraming salamat. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Madam you Chair. Much. Thank you po sa lahat.